Psalms 105 and 15. And verse 6 declares, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Now if you are sitting here this morning, let me be with you. So let's praise the Lord in this place this morning. All right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. You praise the Lord. Amen. You can't praise him like that. He is almighty. He is omniscient. He is God above all. Now you better praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There you go. Come on, give him some praise in this place. This morning we welcome each and every one of you. And we thank you for God has led you to this place. This morning, the Women's Fellowship is a message of praise. Our preacher this morning will be no other than Sister Glendale Newborn. And we are here to praise and to worship God. Let us will be done in this place this morning. Amen. The choir will now come with them as well.
Holy Son. Christmas is intended to be a transforming event, not a lovely interlude in business as usual. What we do in Advent in preparation for Christmas will be our means of getting ready for a new way of looking at life, a new way of living. The prophet Malachi speaks of a messenger. One who will prepare the way of the Lord, one who reminds us of the covenant of God, one who reminds and purifies us in faithfulness, by grace and power and unbelievable, by sense and faith. If we prepare our lives by renewing our covenant with God, then we will be truly transformed as Christ comes again into our lives. You may be seated. The women will now come to light the candle of peace. I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, says the Lord of hosts. The light of hope has awakened our spirits. The voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight, make his path straight. Renew us in your covenant, O God. That we may be ready for the dawn of our salvation. We will light a second candle to bring to brighten the light to every darkness and to guide us in the way of peace. With gratitude for the Lord, we will prepare to welcome a new word of the Lord.
sitting on high is in great torment. The shine of our robes is in darkness, and the shadow of death does at our feet as the day of peace. Of 
of St. Paul's College and also the staff. I invite them to stand so you can see them and they just give you a wave. I don't know if they'd like to do a greeting. I just would like to do a greeting, but just let them stand so you can see them. Yeah. Thank you very much for this evening. It's a hard working staff, and so we have to make sure that we bless them in every way that we can. Pray for them and also support them in every way that we can. May God be with you as you visit with us today, and may you receive the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Amen. This morning we welcome the Paul College principal and faculty member. Right now we are going to go into our presentation. Could the principal please come forward? Let us now play the collective element. 
Brothers and sisters in Christ, the present good morning. The reading is 1 Corinthians 1, 3 to 11. I thank my God for every remembrance of you, always in every one of my prayers for all of you, praying with joy for your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because I hold in my heart all of you in my parties in God's grace both in my imprisonment and the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the tender affection of Christ Jesus. And in my prayer that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge of full insight to help you to determine what really matters so that in the day of Christ, you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel is found in Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Glory to you, God. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea, and to Pontius, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and every crooked place shall be made straight, and the rough waves made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord.
when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod and his brothers ruled as co-regents, and Annas and Caiaphas served as high priests. These facts pinpoint the context politically and spiritually. And a study of history lets us know that each of these prominent individuals named in the scripture were some bad hombres. <laughs> Corrupt and self-serving to their core. And in the midst of this political and spiritual cesspit, John was called by God to become a herald with Jesus all around the journey. Proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Now, heralds in olden times visited cities and towns in advance of the arrival of the king. If a king, he would come and say to the residents, the king is coming. The king is coming. And they were to clean up the place and prepare smooth roads. No potholes like we got here in Freeport. <laughs> smooth roads for the monarch's arrival. The consequences for failure to prepare and clean away unsightly rubbish was a dire consequence. If the king was displeased by their disrespect by not cleaning up for his arrival. Many of us here were here in Grand Bahama for the visit of Queen Elizabeth II. And I'm sure you remember watching the court conduct a massive clean-up, fix-up, paint-up campaign in preparation for her arrival. They planted trees and shrubs and resurfaced roads all along her proposed route. Our gospel recorded in Luke 3 and 4 repeats the words of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Verse 5, every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and rough ways made smooth. In ancient times, they would excavate surrounding countryside to fill in valleys, fill in all valleys, so that the king wouldn't have to stress himself out, or his horses even, to enter their town. And verse 6 says, And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Now, in late October and early November, my husband and I spent some time visiting our children and grandchildren across the U.S. When we got to, when we got to D.C., my granddaughter was dragging about that she was so exhausted and I asked her why she was so pooped. And her response was, Mom had me cleaning all night like Jesus was coming. <laughs> I just laughed because I wanted to tell her if you kept that toxic waste dump of yours room clean, you would not have to be cleaning all night like Jesus was coming. But I was good. I didn't respond aloud. I just gave it to myself. But I had a good laugh. Kirkwood, like Jesus was coming, came back to my mind while preparing for today because John the baptizer truly was calling all people to clean up our lives like Jesus was coming. Whether that be at his second coming when he, or when he calls us home in bed. Verse 4 says, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. 
my mentor, Marilyn Hickey, taught us to straighten up any deviations in our lives that wasn't plumb with the straight and narrow of God's word. If you're off track, confess it and repent. First John 1 and 9 promises, if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confess it, repent, get back on the straight and narrow. Verse 5 says, every valley shall be filled. We all at some point in our lives has had some go down, judgy ways. When we have behaved vengefully because of some real or perceived wrong, we also may have low self-esteem, which is not warranted for a child of the king. We need to rid ourselves of such mindsets and put on the mind of Christ. Every mountain and hill should be made low. Pride and arrogance and thinking of ourselves more highly than we should are mountains to be leveled so we can relate to people and proclaim the salvation of God. And the cross <laughs> shall be made straight. Do we have any crookedness in our nature? I don't want to see your hands. Get it straight. Just get it straight. And the rough ways made smooth. You know, sometimes we answer people or we handle people rough. Our text says, make those rough ways smooth. I think all people are like porcupines. We can needle one another when we try to be close. And it takes some negotiation for porcupines and people to be in close proximity because without any intention, we can just needle one another. And it takes mouths of forgiveness and understanding to live in community. Amen? Amen. Verse 6 says, And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. First, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God, because if we live in community, after filling every valley of low down within, and tearing down every arrogant high place of prideful, haughty attitudes, and get rid of our crookedness and smooth off our red rough edges, all people would see is a loving community. And the word says, they will know we are Christians by our love. And they will see what the salvation of God looks like when they see Jesus in us. Further, we have the benefit of living in this dispensation of grace. And we know, just as Jesus fulfilled prophecy in his nativity in the little town of Bethlehem, he will fulfill the prophecies of his second coming to claim the redeemed. That is all of us who are prepared and awaiting our promised King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, before I conclude this message, I feel compelled to make certain that you understand that the steps I've discussed with you this morning regarding preparing the way of the Lord is not a prescription for salvation. Salvation is by grace alone, by faith in the finished work of the cross. The steps we have outlined in our gospel text is a prescription for discipleship. As disciples, we are called to proclaim the good news of salvation and make disciples of all nations, tribes, and kindred. We are called to proclaim a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord, as you'll read in Luke 1 and 17, to prepare a way for the Lord into the hearts of mankind. 
I want you to think about this. If he had shown up last night, what would he have found him doing? Would he have found your spiritual house in order? Would he have found your life cleaned up? Would he have found you prepared for his coming? The truth is that all of us still have preparations that need to be made. And that's okay. Because Christ has not come back yet. But let us continue to make preparations because he could return at any moment. Repent from any habit of sin in your life. Turn from it and return to God. That is how you prepare the way for the Lord in your own life. Today we lit this Advent candle of peace. Preparing the Lord's path toward peace requires us to think differently about my new world sets as you know it. John quotes the prophet Isaiah to describe the earth shaking transformation that must take place. Though his words can certainly be taken as merely a clean up, fix up, paint up campaign like the court went through. In the context of Bruce writing, they invoke a richer association. Valleys filled full, mountains and hills humble, everything crooked made straight. Preparing for God's arrival means rethinking systems and structures that we see as normal, but that God condemns as oppressive and crooked. It means letting God humble everything that is proud and self-satisfied in us. And letting God heal and lift up what is broken and beaten down. The claims that the world's authorities make often conflict with God's claims and God's ways. Paths that seem perfectly satisfactory to the world are not good enough for God and not good enough for us. Luke calls us to let God's word reshape us and the world's social systems and our own mindsets and hearts. God's ways are not our ways. But God's way leads to salvation. God's glory will be revealed in Jesus, the judge who comes to save us. This is the good news that John proclaimed. And it is the good news, not just for us, but for the whole world. All flesh will see God's salvation. This is his promise and our hope. Let's prepare the way. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And we acknowledge that your ways are better than our ways. Lord, we ask you to show us the low places in our lives, the low places of self-doubt, of low self-esteem, of grief, of loss, of failure, of regret, of guilt, and shame, that keep us from navigating this world as a blood-bought child of the King of Kings. Also, show us when we have thought ourselves better or superior to others, when our ego is enslaved, when we're full of ourselves. Help us bring those mountainous mindsets low. We repent and ask that you help us avoid any and all crookedness and roughness in our dealings with others. And give us boldness to proclaim the good news of your free gift of salvation to this lost and dying world. And prepare the way of the Lord as long as you give us strength. Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering our prayer.
was also a member of the Muslim Legal Services. We resume on our journey set. Also be reminded of the lengthy and devotional booklet, invitations to write a devotion for the booklet have been sent out. As the time is for our essence, please keep in mind that your devotion is to be sent to the email listed. Lengthy booklet at yahoo.com on or before December 31st. The deadline has been strictly adhered to so that the book can be prepared in a timely manner to be ready for the winter season. <coughs> also, please be reminded of the bus drive. And please remember our sick insurance to call or visit them whenever possible. Let us also be reminded of Sister Rochelle Rowe and Jody Rowe, the first members of the service, will take place on Saturday, December 14th, at University Kingdom Center on Central Street. And let us also remember the prayer for all those who are not in our study. Please take your book with prayer and fear for the danger of the Lord and Sin. Lord, we give you thanks for all you have. We give you thanks for who you are. We honor you, Father, that you know of all that you are watching with us. Today we come back to give a portion of God that you have given unto us. Lord, may you multiply it according to your riches that you bring us to nothing more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
limited to this from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.